So rest is a core value on the rise with secular man. It needs to be a core value with those of us who believe and read the Bible because rest is offered to us by God. Now, I want to talk about these core values. What are core values in the first place? Core values, as said by a man who has written a book about values, Aubrey Malfurst, a church's core values are its constant, passionate, sacred core beliefs that drive its ministry. In other words, it's, it's the things that are valued deep down within the church. Now, many churches have gone to the trouble, the the, the agony in some cases of writing out their core values, and it's a very good idea. But all too often they are written out and they end up in a file or a notebook in a drawer somewhere and they are not lived out. True core values are reflexive. That is, if it's really my core value, I act on it without thinking. And it takes a while for that to come about. This man, uh, Malfurus, quotes yet another man in his book, uh, O'Reilly, and uh, Charles says this, basic values may be thought of as internalized normative beliefs that can guide behavior. Internalized, I've made them my own. They, we could say they're part now of my DNA. It'd be sort of like an athlete. Let's take soccer. A ball is in the air, to a soccer player and he knows without thinking whether he needs to hit it with his head or with his foot. I will not demonstrate with my foot hitting the ball or anything like that. You wouldn't want me to do that. But you get the idea, a real soccer player knows what he's to do or what she is to do right on the spot. It's become a reflexive response. When the ball comes to the left foot, they hit it with the left foot or the right foot. They know how to put themselves in position to respond to where the ball is. Reflexive. We need core values that are reflexive, that we're not doing because we're forced or out of guilt, but we respond freely. And we need to rest without guilt and know that it's okay to rest and not against God, but with God who created not only work, but he also created rest. Well, I want to go through the Bible and point out to you or with you that there are a number of verses in the Bible. It's there so often, that is, rest is there so often that we again and again see that it becomes relevant to our faith in God, our Christianity. So we're going to walk through the Bible and again and again we can see that rest is a core value with God. Rest is a core value with God, so much so that God rested immediately after creation as an example to us. In the next session, we will talk about why God rested. But for now, let's just note that He did. And He did so as an example to us, found in Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. After creating all that we have in this world, uh, God then stopped. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. So rest is immediately an action of God. He stops creating and he begins to rest as an example to us. Secondly, rest is a core value with God so much so that God blessed rest. It's interesting that he doesn't bless until living creatures, animals, and then man come upon the face of the earth. So God treats rest like a created thing, like a living thing. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. He blessed it. He said not only is it good, but it is special. It is full of life. Thirdly, Rest is a core value with God, so much so that God made rest holy. This is quite interesting that God blessed the seventh day, but then He made it holy. He didn't just call it holy, but He made it holy like, like it was a chamber, a sanctuary. 
that when a person pauses to rest with God in mind, God moves in upon the person's life. So if a person is constantly in motion, they're missing something of the holiness of God. He made it holy. As we move on, we'll talk more about that holiness and rest a bit later. Rest is a core value with God so much so that God named a day after rest. He named a day after rest. Rest means rest or to cease. Bear in mind that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day He gives you bread for two days. The first time we have the word Sabbath occurring, uh, we find it in Exodus chapter 16, verse 29, the time in which God rained down manna to feed His children by. And so God established a day. He named a day after rest. Now there's seven days out there. So not that many uh, times, or not that many opportunities to give something a name for the seven days of the week. But rest was so important that he named a day after it. So every week, it's the word Sabbath. It's the word Saturday. The word Sabbath is a word that we uh, has a have, has a root that comes then to be known as Saturday. Every week we're reminded of rest. Once every seven days. Rest is a core value with God so much so that God made a commandment about rest. Now we know there are ten primary commandments, the Ten Commandments. Most people can recite them if they've uh, read the Bible and gone to church and so forth, or at least they know several of them. Well, the fourth commandment is about this day of rest called Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord. There are only ten commandments, and uh, one of them ranked in the top ten. Anything that makes the top ten is probably of great importance. And so I call it a core value because rest, a commandment about rest, made the top ten. It's the fourth commandment. David Hansen, a man who has written a few books about rest, has said the following, The sin of working constantly, excluding time for God, deserved a place in the Ten Commandments. We argue against the Sabbath commandment more than all the rest. Isn't it strange that God gives us rest, offers us rest, and we refuse it? We make up excuses for not resting. We move on and realize that number six, rest is a core value with God so much so that God made the commandment comprehensive. That it, it wasn't just for the elite, the wealthy, the aristocrats, the noble, but rest was to be enjoyed by everyone and everything, including the animals. And so God said in the fourth commandment, on it, on the Sabbath, you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Seventh, rest is a core value with God, so much so that God established rest as a sign bonding himself to his people. In other words, the people of God will be known not merely for their service to God, but their resting with God. It is a sign between me and the sons of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he ceased from labor and was refreshed. God himself was refreshed. And that word means that as he paused, he stopped. The, the surge of life would be restored in God Almighty. It has more meaning for us who become drained of the substance of life when we become tired and weary from hard work. Isn't it interesting that when we pause, we recharge. When we rest, our bodies uh, refresh themselves. God has made us that way. But this rest would be a sign between God and His people. The rest of the world would have to go on working in monotonous day after day, work, work, work. 
But God in His goodness, His grace, graces, graciousness gave rest to His people as a sign that He is a merciful God that gives His people a break, a rest, and yet we refuse it. The very act of refusing to succumb to the enormous pressure of Western culture around us, we too serve as a sign of a free people. The Sabbath, the concept of rest, indicates to us and to the world that we are free. Peter Scazzaro has written an in, uh, interesting and excellent book, actually two of them, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality and Emotionally Healthy Church. Rest is a core value with God, so much so that God gave rest to the land every seventh year. Those who work in the fields and agriculture as farmers know that uh, land needs rest, a change of pace, a time when it can t in restore itself as well. But in the seventh year, the seventh year is to have a sab Sabbath of rest, a sa Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow your fields or prune your vineyards. Give the land a year, a, a rest every seventh year. God gave rest to the land. Rest is a core value with God so much so that He gave His people land in which they could rest. To rest you need, need not only time, but you need a space or place to rest. And so to end the wanderings of a nomadic people, God gave them a land that He had promised to him ages before. Remember the commandment that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you. The Lord your God is giving you rest and has granted you this land. You are to help your brothers until the Lord gives them rest as He has done for you. And until they too have taken possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving them. After that, you may go back and occupy your land, your own land which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you east of the Jordan toward the sunrise. When the people of Israel came to the promised land, they divided it up, and the various tribes are given various allotments of land. And so they had a place to rest, not only time as in the Sabbath day, but they had a place, a land of rest. God gives His people rest and a space to rest. God grants us rest, or God grants rest to those He loves. Rest is a core value with God, so much so that we find that those He loves, He gives rest. Yet we often in vain rise up early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For He grants sleep to His people, those He loves. In vain, He says, you rise early, stay up late, toiling for your food to eat. But He, God, a gracious God, loves those and therefore gives you sleep. To always be tired, to look tired, to be weary is a sign to others that perhaps we have a God who works us too hard. But it's often ourselves. We are the ones that don't rest. We feel guilty when we rest. Instead, God says, I give sleep to those I love. The world may wonder if God loves us if we don't sleep, if we don't know how to rest. The verse, uh, there's a verse in Isaiah that says, but the wicked are like the tossing sea, which cannot rest. Those waves cast up mire and mud. Isaiah 57, verse 20. That's in contrast to the righteous who are given rest. Does this describe your belief system? A system that says, I have to work all the time because uh, God won't like me if I rest. There's a saying, among some who say, no rest for the wicked and the righteous don't need any. Others have said, I'd rather burn out than rust out. That is to drive myself into a case of breakdown rather than just sit around and rest. Well, neither extreme is good. God calls us to work. God calls us to enjoy rest. We're getting closer to the end of these core values with God, but this core value of rest 
is so much a core value with God, God provides a day of rest as a gift to man. In the New Testament, Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. In other words, it is a gift to man, offered to man. It's not that man is forced to keep the Sabbath, but rather he wants to keep it because it's a provision of God. Rest is a core value with God, so much so that God offers rest to the weary and burdened. One of the most beautiful passages of Scripture comes from the lips of our Lord Jesus, of course. And he said it in contrast to the Pharisees and those religious leaders who forced the people, forced the people with legalistic burdens. But Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I can't wait to... Uh, teach about this passage of Scripture. It is so beautiful. God offers rest to the weary and burdened. And finally, rest is a core value with God, so much so that God refers to rest as heaven. At the end of the Bible, toward the end, in the book of Hebrews we read, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For everyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. And I would just say a few words about this passage, and later we'll talk about it in depth. Very simply, God offers rest to his people who stop working for their salvation and stop working for their sanctification, their purity, because God provides salvation, but he also refines us, sanctifies us. It's not all up, up to us to change us, but as we enter in God's rest, we, we work with Him and not against Him, not apart from Him. And it is God who is in the whole process of salvation and sanctification and changing and transforming our lives. God refers to rest as heaven. These verses really for refer to heaven going forward. Ultimately, we'll find rest, but the process of rest begins now. Learning how to rest begins now. Lois is going to read a few verses, or I should say quotes, from uh, a few Bible theologians, and the first is from James Montgomery Boyce. He talks about rest being a little slice of heaven. When God led Israel out of Egypt into the wilderness in their days of wandering, he had a goal to bring them into the promised land. It was to be a place where they would find rest from their wanderings. It was a symbol of heaven. A symbol of heaven, the promised land, represented more than just a place on earth to plant uh, fruit trees and live, but it was like a little piece of heaven, a reflection of heaven that they would have. And now Ben Patterson has this to say about Sabbath. The Sabbath is therefore a window to the future. It points to the time when God will make sense of this mess. It tells us that there is more than just the inexorable march of time. It reminds us that there is meaning to our lives beyond the rat race. Again, it's a little piece, a reflection of heaven. And the hope of heaven is restored to us weekly as we pause to be with God and reflect on how things will be ultimately in heaven. But we can survive earth and thrive on earth if we pause to recognize that he gives us a little piece of heaven here on earth on a weekly basis. And we must make use of it. And it actually prepares us for the day we will enjoy God forever in his heaven. Rest is a core value with God. Is it a core value with you? That's the question. Leonard Duhan has said the following, which is a powerful statement about Christianity. Again, Lois will read. To fail to see the value of simply being with God and doing nothing is to miss the heart of Christianity. I think that of these three 
um, quotes from different authors that this is probably my favorite. Um, we've lost the ability to simply just be with God and do no nothing. That is um, indeed, to me, the heart of Christianity, and it's something that the body of Christ has lost. We don't know how to just sit and be quietly with God and to talk to Him and to let Him speak to us. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com. For discussion at some time later, or for personal evaluation, I would like each of you here and those who are watching by video to reflect on what role rest played in the household or the home where you were raised. The way we were raised has a lot to do with how we review and think of rest and respond to rest here and now. now I want to illustrate just uh, how this teaching has been received in other parts of the world as well. It's been my honor to teach not only in Russia the United States, of course, but also in Africa. I had a group of students in Nigeria. And uh, I went through this teaching about rest as a core value. And before I got very far into it, uh, one Nigerian said, Dr. Anderson, Dr. Anderson, uh, how can you teach us about rest? Here in Africa, you've not been to Africa, you don't know about our infrastructure, how there's corruption and how we can't travel from one part of this big city to another. And we have all kinds of problems, the electricity goes off and on and on. He went and I said, well, uh, just, just calm down now and listen to what the Bible says about rest. And so he sat down and and then in the afternoon, there was another new student. And he said, uh, excuse me, Dr. Anderson, Dr. Anderson, he too was very animated. How do you expect us to rest? How are we supposed to listen to you, an American who has not been to Africa? You don't understand how it is here. We can't rest. We are so busy. We have a hard time making a living. And the infrastructure and the corruption, and we can't get across town, and it goes on and on. How do you? I said, well, uh, why don't you look at the notes from the students who were here this morning and ask them about the core value of rest, how rest is a core value with God. Well, the next morning, a new student arrives. Excuse me, Dr. Anderson, uh, but you don't understand. You're from America. You've never been in Africa before, and you don't know how in Nigeria there's corruption and problems, and we can't travel from one part of the city to the next. And... By that time, the students rose up out of their chairs and said, it's a core value with God. And the students shriveled back and understood. We have to do it because it's important to God. And that is what counts, what's important to God. And we may have our excuses for not resting. We may have our uh, heritage that said resting is bad. Uh, we'll become lazy people, whatever. It's not about not working. We are to work, and we are to work hard, and we'll see in the next session how work is of God, but also work, uh, rest, and work together are of God, the rhythm of work and then rest. So thank you for being attentive, and in a few moments we'll go on to session two.